Hey y'all and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My name is Lilith and for today's video I want to have a little coffee talk with you guys, a little tea talk. I actually don't have any coffee or tea because it is 5 o'clock at night but I do have some water. Grab some tea, grab some coffee, grab a beverage. We're gonna have a little chat. But before we jump into anything, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss one of my videos. And go ahead and drop a like on this video. It helps so, so, so much. Obviously, you know the topic of today's video if you read the title, Falling Off of the Low Waist Eco Minimalism Bandwagon, especially during Rona, during everything that has been going on in almost the past year. So the way I have this video like broken up is in three different sections. The first section talking about things that the pandemic changed that made it harder to be as sustainable as I was before. The second category is things that I have noticed that I have fallen off of or if that, that I've been doing poorly in areas that I can improve and that I am looking to improve. So areas that I'm doing not so good in. And then the final section, just to wrap everything up with a good note, things that I'm still continuing to do, habits that I developed, habits and products that I found before that I am still using now, things like that. So, oh, and stay till the end of this video because we do a little bit of call out on a certain large YouTube creator on here. So stay to the end if you wanna see that. Let's just, let's get into it. I think one of the main reasons I have felt like I've fallen off of the sustainability, eco-minimalism bandwagon, whatever you want to call it, is because I got tired of having to shop at 10 different places online to get all the products that I need. I missed the luxury of being able to go to the grocery store and just buy things that I needed there and have them when I needed them instead of waiting for them to be shipped and spending money on shipping and this and that and having to take that extra time to find those places online, make sure I'm placing orders, and then my money is going to like 10 different places instead of all just to like my grocery budget. So it was becoming, I felt like very hard to keep track of everything and the different things that I bought and like where to buy them from, that kind of thing. Finding like a couple of places where I buy certain products from or finding a way to have subscriptions that I don't have to think about, stuff like that would make it a little bit easier instead of having to shop at a bunch of different places for the products that I use on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. I also really felt the convenience of buying products already made. I used to make literally everything. If I could DIY it, I would. I made my own makeup for the longest time and I still use some homemade eyeshadows and homemade uh, lip balms and stuff like that, but I fell off of making everything because I found the convenience of buying products that were already made. And I think that that's fine if I buy sustainable packaged, sustainably made things, but that can be a little bit difficult. Even though I do shop at Whole Foods, it can be a little bit difficult to still even find some products that are not sold in like plastic bottles and stuff. So getting back to DIY things, making more things myself, that way I don't have to go to a bunch of different places for products that I use. I can make them here for lower cost with ingredients I already have. That's what I am looking to do more in the future as well. I think another reason I fell off of this is because I was working so, so, so much and I'm trying to find a better work-life balance now that I am full-time content. So another thing, bulk sections got shut down. I used to bring so many jars and so many bags to the grocery store and I would do most of my shopping at the grocery store in the bulk section. And that's just not a thing right now. Bulk sections got shut down. Now I do see that the bulk, some of the bulk bins, like not the ones with the scoops, but the ones with the like pull the thing and it comes out like with nuts and stuff at Whole Foods. I do see that those are full, but I don't know if they're allowing you to bring your own jars again, because I know for a long time they were not allowing you to bring your own jars. So I need to speak with them at Whole Foods the next time I'm there and, say, and see if they're doing that or not, or if it's just you can fill up their plastic bags, which is not helpful, not helping the situation. That's been another big thing. There's not really any bulk sections for me to 
buy some of these things that I would normally buy without packaging. And along those same lines, not being able to bring our coffee cups and our bottles and those kind of things places to get them filled. Places just aren't allowing that right now. And as much as we make coffee at home, I still like to have a nice latte from a locally owned coffee shop on a Sunday morning. And that sucks and I don't know when or if we'll be able to go back to bringing our own reusable mugs to places. And also another big thing for me is we used to bring our compost to the farmer's market. I live in an apartment complex so we don't have compost pickup here. I know that my city does compost curbside pickup for uh, neighborhoods but they don't have it for apartment complexes so I was actually doing some research on where we could bring our compost I found a company called break it down Austin I'll link them below if you live here in Austin they will set up compost and recycling at apartment complexes office buildings restaurants stuff like that so I am going to talk to my apartment complex about contracting with them so that we can get compost bins right here in our complex picked up every week rinsed out and the really cool thing about this company is they do take bioplastics, which most composting, most local compost that we have found around here do not take bioplastics. So those, those plastic cups that say, ooh, biodegradable, blah, 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 most quick composting or most backyard compost or just regular compost can't do those bioplastics. They're not equipped to compost those bioplastics, but this company is, which is really cool because everywhere around here uses those bioplastics and I like I can't I can't do anything with this I can't actually compost it you're not actually helping so those are kind of the challenges and some of the things that have made being more sustainable a little bit difficult during the time that we're in right now and a couple of ways that I want to work towards fixing those or going around those or finding other ways so the next thing I want to talk about is some of the challenges that I've been having. Um, challenges including balancing sustainability and veganism. And that may sound counterintuitive. Veganism is more sustainable. So how are those two things butting heads? But hear me out. A lot of synthetic fibers are made from plastic. So synthetic fibers that are vegan alternatives are not necessarily the best thing for the environment. So I end up in this place. Do I choose the vegan option or do I choose the sustainable option? And I try to find where those two bridge and where they meet. One of the places that I find this is dryer balls. I can find wool dryer balls at my grocery store. I can find plastic dryer balls at my grocery store. One's vegan, one's more sustainable. I know that hemp and cotton dryer balls exist I have to go online, I have to pay more, I have to get them shipped. Right now we still have dryer sheets because my boyfriend had bought like a huge bulk pack a couple of years ago and we're still going through those. Once we get through those, I will order those hemp ones, those cotton ones online. But I would have liked to switch before he bought those, but it does make it more difficult that I have to go to a separate place, I have to research online, I have to find somewhere that sells the vegan version of this sustainable alternative. Another thing like this is beeswax wraps. I know that soy wax and other types of wax wraps exist and I would like some, I would like to get some. They sell locally made beeswax wraps at my farmer's market. From beeswax that's locally sourced, everything's made locally, sold at the farmer's market. I asked them if they were gonna do soy wax or beeswax alternatives and they said, we are setting up to be able to do that, but those are custom order you have to call. You have to call custom order, they have to be like shipped or we have to bring them on a specific day to the market. It's a lot, there's a lot more that they and I have to go through to make that happen. When they're already making the beeswax wraps, there's the sustainable option or there's the vegan option, which technically plastic wrap is, I don't really use plastic wrap a lot, but I would like to, I would like the soy wax wrap, which is the bridge between those, but there are also drawbacks to that. I know that like beeswax is antimicrobial and stuff and I don't know if soy wax is. So there are some drawbacks to that vegan bridge alternative. Wax wraps is something I would already own. I would just buy the beeswax wraps if I could justify it, but I can't. 
The next thing is I still have plastic bags because I bought them in bulk at Costco, I don't know, three or four years ago. I still have some because I rarely use them. And all of our food saving stuff is mostly glass. Y'all do know I have some of those quart containers. We'll save quart containers from restaurants and stuff like that and use them as meal prep containers. But they crack fairly often and they have to be tossed. So I want to get away from using those. But I'm still going to use them until I can no longer use them because I want to get the use out of them. As far as like the Ziploc bags and go, we have four stasher bags. Four is not enough. And they cost money. So we have to collect them slowly over time. And I wish that I had more. I love them. I use them a lot. But that's where we're at. We only have four. That's one of those things that's just gonna take time and money for us to get. So the next one is I meal prep every Monday, which is good. We're eating at home and we're cooking from scratch, but I got in the habit of starting to buy broccoli and kale in bags already cut and prepped because I like eating healthy, but healthy also takes more time and effort. So and I know that I could buy the broccoli and I could chop it up myself and then I could store it in a stasher bag just like if it was come, came in a bag, but I don't have any big stasher bags available. I have two of, two of the big ones. Both of them have frozen bananas in them in the freezer and I have nowhere else to put those bananas. So like, I don't have anywhere to put the broccoli if I did cut it myself. I don't have room in my fridge for like a big container. And it's easier, honestly, it is easier for me to eat healthy when I have the broccoli already ready, the kale already ready. And because of how much I work lately, it has made eating healthy so much easier, buying it already prepped. And those are the only two things that I buy already prepped. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing that. I do feel bad when I'm buying these things in plastic bags and I don't know what else to do about it. On that same note, I go grocery shopping on Mondays and while I'm there, I usually buy pre-made lunches. So if y'all know Whole Foods, they have like a section where they have like pre-made sandwiches and sushi and like all this kind of stuff in these like plastic containers that they make at Whole Foods and then they sell already prepped. I usually grab some of that for lunch so that when I get home with the groceries on Monday, we can just immediately have lunch and then I, we can go about our day. But that is buying something also in plastic and I, I don't know a better way to go about buying lunch that's already made because I don't want to stop doing that because it has, again, it has made my life easier and has allowed me to have more time to focus on work, to focus on meal prepping for the rest of the week is a couple of lunches in plastic containers and broccoli and or kale because I usually buy only one per week in a plastic bag justified by meal prepping from scratch everything else the rest of the day for the entire week. I don't know. And I think that is that's one thing that I'm trying to figure out because everybody has to figure out what their what level of sustainability that they can achieve and Right now, I feel like for me, that's what I'm able to do. I'm able to be sustainable all week with a whole bunch of other things by allowing myself these two things. But it's more than two things and we're gonna talk about the rest of the things also in this video. Cause next we're gonna move on to bathroom things. I have tried so many shampoo bars, conditioner bars. I have not liked any of them. I have a lot of hair. Shampoo bars and conditioner bars, conditioner bars especially, are so hard for me to use because I have so much hair. It's so hard for me to really get a lathering through all of my hair, especially now that I've started to do the curly girl method. My hair looks a lot healthier and that's great, but it's a lot of products and it's a lot of products in plastic containers. And I'm trying to find the bridge between the curly girl method, sustainability, and veganism and just making two of those bridges is hard enough but finding where all three of them bridge is even more difficult so at the beginning of this video i said that i liked how easy it was to go to the grocery store buy a product i needed and then just have the product i needed when i needed it 
And I ended up doing that with my shampoo, my conditioner, with my shaving cream, and buying plastic bottles for all of these things because I was tired of trying to figure out what worked for my hair and where I could buy it. Maybe what I'm feeling is that I'm ready to start trying to figure out what works again because I feel like I believe that there probably is a product out there that will work well for my hair, for conditioning my hair, and I just haven't found it yet. So I still have a lot of shampoo and conditioner because we bought big bottles at Costco because we were trying to be a little bit more sustainable instead of buying just a bunch of little plastic bottles. We did buy big bottles at Costco. So whenever we run out of those, I will probably start trying some, at least some conditioner bars because I am probably gonna take a really long time to get through that shampoo since I only use a tiny little bit of shampoo once a week and otherwise I can co-wash if I do wanna wash my hair more than that or seeing how co-washing works with some conditioner bars might be really interesting. I would love to find sustainable curl cream or curl custard or gel. I would love to find sustainable hair oil and hair moisturizer, although I am using the Lush hair moisturizer, which I know you can like return those little jars. Actually, I don't know if they're taking those little jars back right now during Rona. I'm gonna have to try whenever I run out of that one, see if I can bring it back to the store and be like, hey, are you still taking these back? Because if they are, great, cool. Even though it's a plastic package, at least they're doing a package exchange and I can keep using that because I've talked a little bit about how that hair moisturizer has been such a savior for my hair. It keeps my hair like from getting really tangled throughout the week and it just, mm, mm, my hair loves it. But if I can find a product that's even more sustainable, that works just as well or even better, great, awesome. I would love to find that. So that is one of the things that I'm really trying to look into is sustainable, vegan, curly girl method approved products. Cause that, that's, that's the, pinnacle of like trying to find stuff. One more thing for the bathroom. I've been seeing ads for the last swab and I've wanted one for so long. I am not gonna buy one until we're completely out of cotton swabs because we do have a lot. You know, those containers come with a lot in them. We don't use them every day. So they last us a while. But I think once we're finally out of those that I will buy two of the other ones, one for me, one for my partner and try using those. Oh, and not to forget, skincare. I started buying makeup remover and moisturizer also at the grocery store. The makeup remover I use is like a liquid in a bottle and I put it on a washcloth. So I'm using a reusable cloth, but the bottle is plastic. And I know that I can use coconut oil because I've done it before. And I think I just wanna get back to doing that because I don't really like the makeup remover anyways. So I, I wanna try using like coconut oil, olive oil. I've heard Jehovah oil works really well, but I don't wanna spend $30 on a bottle that I'm only using for my face when I already have coconut oil and I already have olive oil. So I think I wanna try those before I invest in anything else. As for moisturizer, I don't know what sustainable moisturizers I can use. I've tried the Lush bars and I like them. They're just really expensive. So I would like to find maybe some moisturizers that are in sustainable packaging once I run out of the one that I bought from Whole Foods. The one that I bought is Pacifica brand and I really love that brand. I love their products, but their packaging is definitely not sustainable. Honestly, their sunscreen is my favorite sunscreen too. And it's probably not a sustainable bottle. I should look into that though, because I think that that one, their like spray sunscreen at least is in like a tin spray can, so like maybe? The top is definitely plastic. That's everything I've been doing bad on and a little bit of how I plan to do better moving forward. But we're gonna leave off on a good note and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the things that I am still doing and that I'm proud of myself for still doing. Like I said earlier, we make coffee at home six days a week, usually in our French press. That means there's no filters, none of that. 
we grind our own coffee beans. We have a little grinder here. So super fresh, delicious coffee every morning. Sometimes I will make lattes and I have a little espresso machine for that. So again, no filters, no K-cups, none of that bullshit. We make coffee here, sustainable. And I also make my own coffee syrups. You also saw my pumpkin spice latte syrup on TikTok a few months ago, as well as on this channel last October. Coffee syrups are really easy to make, so no need to buy them in a plastic bottle if you wanna make sweet lattes. I am still using my reusable produce bags when I go to the grocery store. So even though I can't use any of them in the bulk section, I still use them for my veggies. And I still make my own all-purpose cleaner. I even now have some citrus peel, some oranges, some lemon soaking in some vinegar so that I can have some citrusy smelling cleanser instead of it smelling like vinegar because we don't really love that smell. So instead of just buying a cleaner that smells better, I am trying to make a cleaner that smells better. And the other day I made my own body scrub because that is actually super easy and it, I think it worked really well. I used the espresso grounds that we had used to make coffee earlier that day, mixed them with some water, some coconut oil, boom, body scrub. Super easy. We were buying the body scrub bars from Lush, but again, too expensive and I could make them here even more sustainably and easily. I'm still using bamboo toothbrushes. I am still using Bite, a sustainable toothpaste. It comes in a little jar and then every month they just send you a refill or every three months, I think. I think it's three months that like fit in this jar. They send you a little refill pack. It's this little like, it's this little like paper pack that you just empty into the jar that you already have and they're little toothpaste bites. And as much as my dentist hates that there's no fluoride in my toothpaste, he also understands that I like sustainability and he says that as long as my teeth are doing fine, it's fine. I also tried a refillable deodorant. So the deodorant gets sent in these little cardboard things and then I have like, I, it, I think it's plastic, I'm not sure, but it's like a refillable container so they only send me the inserts and I just pop them in the container and you can use it like deodorant. And I like that I'm not like holding on to cardboard cause I don't know, I just don't, I don't like that feeling, but I like that it is a refillable container. I, I don't use deodorant that often, but also working from home and stuff, you know, I'm not, mm, mm. Uh, so the deodorant I will have in there will last me a long time. So I don't have to refill it that often either. The first R, reduce. I don't sweat a lot, so like I can get away with it, but you know, if you need deodorant. Also, I have gone shopping for clothes, I think twice in the last year, and both times have been at a resale shop. Both times I spent probably like $100, and y'all know for resale shop prices, that is a lot of clothes. This is actually one of the shirts that I found at a resale shop. It's just a really, really comfortable, like loungy hoodie type shirt. So most of my clothes are from resale shops. I recently got merch and when I did my merch line, I made sure it was all the eco line. So that was recycled materials going into my merch as well. So my the merch for my other brand was made sustainably. And the last thing I wanna to touch on, because it pertains to the time we are living in right now, before Miss Rona came along, we already owned cloth face masks because my partner gets really dry nose at night especially in the winter time. So he had ordered some so that he could wear a mask at night so that he wouldn't get like really, really dry and cracky bloody noses and stuff. But also because I had one from festivals. It's like a normal thing for you to wear a face mask at a festival because there's all this dirt kick up. There's something called the wook flu, which just means you get like a, a flu-like or cold after a show, after a festival, just cause you're outside with thousands of people and all this dust and stuff. So like, masks were already a thing in the festival community so we already had cloth face masks we never had to go through disposable ones because we were already prepared and the last thing I want to talk about in this video is a little bit of call out a little bit of tea sort of I follow Shell Bissell I'm sure a lot of you do if you're interested in sustainability low waste all of that kind of thing and I hadn't watched her videos in 
a long time. I think since like the beginning of the pandemic, I hadn't watched any of her videos. And then I clicked on one while I was researching for this video, just so I could catch up on the eco minimalist uh, tips and tricks and stuff that she had. And I know that she eats vegan and I knew that before and I thought that she was fully vegan and I found out through these videos that she uses a wool dryer balls, beeswax wraps, I don't know if she uses any other type of animal products. Um, I'm sure that she probably buys like secondhand animal product clothing which I think is totally fine but like specifically the dryer balls and the beeswax wraps. I know that her focus is environmental and that is what fuels her veganism. I always thought that she was somebody I could look to to bridge that gap, to help me find those products that were sustainable and vegan. And I was a little bit let down by the fact that she didn't even talk about vegan alternatives to those products. She just went for the easiest grab in sustainability. And maybe those are the more sustainable option. I'm not sure, I'm not the expert. She's the one that has the degree in this, right? But I just, I expected something of her and that was me putting my expectations on her, not her actually being who she is. And so while I am a little bit let down, that doesn't mean that I'm going to buy those animal products. I'm gonna do my best to find the products that bridge the gap between sustainability and veganism and share those with you guys since I don't know anybody else who is. I'm sure that there are people on YouTube that I don't know about that are sharing products that are both, but I don't know any. I also am sure that there's people on YouTube sharing sustainable curly girl vegan products. Again, I don't know any, so I'm gonna take up the mantle and try and show you guys some of these things that I find on this journey as I figure out what works or also if it is justified to buy the wool dryer sheets or the beeswax wraps. I am I am open to arguments from all sides. So if you wanna make those arguments down in the comments or if y'all wanna send this video to her so that she can make those arguments about why those might be better products than other products and how they are friendly to the animals or not, I would love to hear that as well. So yeah, ending this with a little bit of call out, not really. I still like her and I still watch her channel and I still think it's really useful and helpful, but sometimes I feel like it's a little bit detached from what most people's reality is. <sighs> but with that, I'm going to end this video. It ended up being quite long. I did not think it was gonna be this long, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video, a recipe, a vlog, all of that. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye y'all.